Hey everybody, welcome to another model building workshop and today I'm going to uh, put some decals and finish up the Roland C11 here and uh, talk a little bit about some of the World War I aircraft. So here's the Roland which I opted for the purple and green camo that I thought was so fascinating. I've got that on this old uh, albatross that I had built a number of years ago, which is still here. And I thought that was kind of a fun color scheme. So this one I'm going to add some decals to. This turned out to be a really nice model. Uh, there really weren't any problems building this one. Went together very nicely. Uh, this de design for the wings of having the wings sit on top of the fuselage and on the bottom of the fuselage. Well, it eliminated all of those annoying struts and braces. There's just a couple here. Uh, so the only tricky part, which really wasn't even that bad, was getting this wheel set up underneath. But that, that went together really smoothly, too. So this was actually a really nice kit. And yeah, I got this one a couple of years ago from a store. Maybe, maybe a couple of years ago. And... I don't think it's uh, that readily available now because I was kind of sourcing this on the internet and you could get some through like eBay but the prices were I thought were kind of odd like $13, $14 and up and it's a small model I think I paid like under 10 for that so anyway something to think about if you're interested but I did I did find it nice that it was a very affordable kit when I found it and it, it went together really really well I think that had potential for kids uh, I did make a couple of mistakes on it in that if you can see uh, the way I got the the gunner in the back sitting he's kind of leaning over and couldn't really get him to look like he was manning the machine gun at all so I guess he's uh, taking a coffee break I don't know <laughs> so uh, again this was the the d7 that's how that one came out and again not terrible but these struts and lining the, the the top wing on it was a bit hairy it's not impossible but it would definitely test a lot of people's patience so i have a couple others here i showed you the albatross i've got this well I'm trying to repair this old spad that i had built a while back had some damage done to it Oh, and it fell off the shelf. But uh, anyway, so there are a number of different World War I aircraft models out there. I think I showed you that you know, Airfix makes a number of them, like the Sopwith Camel, the DR-1 triplane. And without making everything else fall down. <laughs> Got the... Uh, RE8 here, just a kind of a bigger plane. Got in a bag as the parts get falling out of the box. So they do make a number of different things. And I got an older one here. The Eindecker, just kind of a odd sounding, you know, that's a German expression for you know one winger. Uh, so there's this one and that. I'll just kind of quickly show you what this looks like. So it just has one wing. So there's not too much to this one, but again, it is tiny stuff. So you need lots of patience for that. And if you're really into this stuff, one's kind of an old one even though it's brand new in the box but you know testers had spad 13 but there's a new line of aircraft kits that are quite nice a little more detail and these are from Edward so there's a the spad 13 here this is 148 scale so it's a larger scale the fall d3 very colorful yeah we get the box open 
but I started working on this one, you know, and it's a pretty good size model. Again, I thought I'd paint this first to make it a little bit easier when I put it together. So it's not going to be a tiny plane. 148, it gives you a little bit more size. And just a quick note on scale. And here's a Hario HD1 with a really colorful Italian scheme. And again, if you see the price on there, $9.95. So that's not, it's not bad, really. It's a pretty good size model plane. At a decent price. Oh, get this stuff out of the way. <laughs> but with scale, which, which sounds, you know, if you think about this, it sounds kind of backwards. But the higher the number in scale, the smaller the model is going to be. So this is 172nd scale. So it means it's 72 times smaller than the original. So the bigger aircraft are going to have lower numbers because they've been reduced less. Okay, so like 124th would be 24 times smaller than the original. This is 72. And they go even smaller down to like 1 144th scale, which is going to be pretty, pretty tiny because it's 144 times smaller than the original life-size object. All right, so I'm going to try to put a couple of decals on. I'm hoping these are going to be good. This was a fairly new kit, so let's, let's hope. So I'm just going to put a couple of things on here and we'll kind of get started. Again, with decals, these are uh, put these in warm water for 30 seconds to a minute. Add a little bit of water onto the area where it's going to go. And you slide them on and you pat them dry. These are soak and apply decals. So they're not like stickers, they're not peel and apply. So I know we've talked about that in other episodes of the model building workshop but if you're just joining us i'll bring you up to speed <laughs> okay so i'm just going to wait a little bit for that to uh soften up so we can slide it on sometimes it's good to have a pair of tweezers ready to help grab it out of the water and we'll see how this goes usually doesn't take too long but you never know so i'm hoping this is going to cooperate because this is fairly new yeah kit this kit's been reissued many times i think the molding is probably goes back to the 1970s and apparently this was originally an airfix kit i guess heller got a hold of it later on and we released it and that's common in the model building world that a mold of a kit will kind of get traded around by different companies and kind of get released many different times. All right, so I can line this thing up. Try to line it up with the uh, with the ribs of the wing here. That's not crooked. Yeah, of course it's crooked. <laughs> Let's try and move that a little bit. Let's see if I can alter that a little bit. Go flat there. So. All right, yeah, these decals are great, which is great. Because if any of you saw some of the decaling I tried to do on the T-72 tank yeah, on any of those episodes, I had a real fun time with those failing miserably. So it's good to see one that actually wants to work. Okay, so you get the idea. Nice and colorful, right? So it's going to have more over here, one on the back. And that's how it's going to go. All right, I think I'm going to stop there. I don't want to, uh, you know, drag this on, have you watch me put every single decal on. I think that'll be a little bit too much. But uh, so that's how 
the Roland came out. Nice kit, fun to build, not too many headaches. So, all right, we'll check in with you uh, next time on another episode of the Model Building Workshop. Hope to catch you guys then. See ya. Bye now. Mm-hmm. <laughs>